هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos on esti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karisa menos. Welcome back everybody. Yep. <laughs> it's time for another segment of the BTS vlog. And so I can say good morning, Christos and Esti. <sighs> because, well, well it is, it's actually kind of morning now. <laughs> Before I say it's not actually, it's not a, it's not always morning. In this case, it is morning. It's about 5.47, but it's about 6 o'clock in the morning. So, it's time to get the uh, time and date stamp. It is 5 hours and 47 minutes into the day of Thursday, May 22nd, 2014. And we are off to a somewhat good start. Uh, enough of the work is getting done that I'm happy with it. It's not going as fast as I would like it to go. Uh, I've had to re-upload, uh, re-edit and re-upload uh, <laughs> one of the episodes of Insta Vlogs, And that's it, 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 the breaking in of the new editing desk, the breaking in of new shows is a more complicated task than I expected it to be. And there, there are errors that prop crop in. Uh, I'll give you an example. The error that, that sort of popped up uh, for the instant vlog that just sort of went out. What you'll know, uh, it, well, for those of you who don't know, the upload time for a show of that size, about a half hour, uh, takes about three hours. About three hours in length. That's the upload time. So, the total time just for upload is six hours. Add to the fact that you have to add an hour for editing, uh, and this required two re-edits uh, in terms of the way you re-render it out. So that adds, an, that adds another two, three hours to the uh, time. And you're talking about uh, a nine-hour chunk of the day in terms of the, the total editing time from, from the time you put it on to the editing bay and you upload it. We're talking about nine hours worth of time that was sort of uh, lost that, that was required for this, for this thing. And so it, it it does slow things down when things mess up and when you have to redo something. If you're talking uh, uh, sort of redoing the things, you took, you're talking about a, a uh, four or five hour chunk of time to redo something. So you spend four hours on it, you make a mistake, you realize you have to go back and do it again You've just wasted uh, five hours. Five hours has, has just gone by. And so what happens, the things that you had planned to be doing kind of get pushed back, and uh, it's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, this is where an efficiency model comes in, is if, if you set up a network and you know how to sort of work with your network, uh, you can get more than one thing done at a time. So, yeah, while well, the editing bay is off doing its work, you still have an editing bay that's open and free. And you can actually be editing two videos at the same time. It just really depends on uh, what's going to be on what editing bay at one at what particular time. So it does allow you. Uh, you know, uh, my systems do allow now for uh, uh, to do multiple things at a time. That brings in more of an efficiency than I had before. But it's still, uh, you're still trying to sort of uh, adjust your time to sort of reflect what needs to be done and when. And this is sort of where it's happening now. Is right now, uh, Beauty and the Geek has been filmed. It's in the editing bay. We'll see how long it takes to get out of the editing bay. Again, a sequence has to be developed and sort of uh, uh, a process has to be developed that uh, allows me to be efficient on the editing bay to get the work done. Uh, but the issue with holding up the editing now is that there has to be uh, graphic overlays in the uh, the interactive edition, not just the graphic overlays, the interactive graphic overlays. As I said before, I'm going to have a blackboard here to the right on some of my videos. Well, that 
all comes in at editing. Editing. Ed and the thing is, you have to meter out when things come in, when things are supposed to go out. Uh, you have to sort of line everything up so that, that as you're speaking, the graphics change. In other words, you want the graphics to be dynamic over here. And that has to be sort of uh, worked worked on in, sort of, uh, in terms of the, uh, my editing skills. And that does take more time than simply uh, joining sev several segments together. So... <laughs> Uh, that still remains to be done. Uh, I have three things, uh, three things on schedule today to be filmed. So I will be filming three things that are on schedule today. Uh, I have Kitchen Diner on the schedule today. I have, um, a new show called Headlines and Beyond on schedule for today. And I might do a third one, the third, third one I have on schedule for today is cyborgs and cybernetics to bring that one back again so uh <laughs> it's gonna you know what you're gonna be seeing is that is there is there's gonna be a lot more content coming your way on cyborg alpha tv i still haven't really decided yet how i'm going to announce these things because i don't want to keep putting out you know uh information again and again and again uh, i know it does give my channel more vision you know i'm more visible that way but the thing is i don't want to be pestering people so <laughs> I'm gonna try as best I can to sort of to push things out in a in, in a reasonable in a reasonable in a reasonable mm, in a reasonable manner. Uh, but uh, at some point in time, there's gonna be enough. There's gonna be uh, too much content to do that with, and things are gonna have to be the the announcements are going to have to be consolidated. Uh, in uh, the way I do things, so uh, but these things are you know this is part. I said this is why I said uh, Cyborg Alpha TV Network begins operating now. It begins. There's a lot of initial work to sort of get things sort of uh, into a routine, into a um, into a regular schedule. But there's also a lot of experimentation with this too as well. Things are going to change uh, as. Um, as I get more experience with this, so uh, this goes with the territory of being an infant tween. This is leveling up just every you know, every uh, just well every two to three months. There's a major leveling up, so it, it's it, it is at that pace now. Uh, it sh this is sort of what should be expected. I'm still trying to get used to it, so it's it's. Get, that getting used to the new schedule, working my sleep around the schedule, working my menus in terms of the summer menu, in terms of how I eat around the schedule, uh, of these new schedules. This is sort of all going to have to be worked on at the same time. So uh, there is a fair amount on my plate. There is an, a, a sort of an enormous amount to do. And I said I, I haven't forgotten about Beauty and the Geek. Beauty and the Geek is now in the editing bay. That means I also have to start working on the production notes for Beauty and the Geek. And you'll see more of that. Uh, being done online, you'll be see more of the uh, channel visits, visits, uh, and you'll see how I sort of adjust uh, my existence online, sort of. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think that's it for now. Our time is up. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and I will see you later. All right, take it easy. <laughs>
<clears throat> follow Western traditions in terms of Christianity. Uh, for those who are in the East who follow Eastern traditions, it's still Pascha and <laughs> it will be for uh, until June. Uh, and that will be sort of the end of Pascha. <laughs> uh, so where are we? I was supposed to, what I was supposed to film yesterday? I was supposed to film Cyborgs and Cybernetics. I was supposed to film uh, something for the kitchen diner. And one more thing, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but today, I will have to definitely, uh, because it is Friday, I have to get the three things I, f I said I was going to get done yesterday done. And I also have to get uh, another episode of Beauty and the Geek done, because it's, uh, I want to try to do Beauty and the Geek once a week uh, on a weekly basis. If that's the case, then I have to get Beauty and the Geek out, done, filmed today, and then out. So, uh, but the thing is, I still have issues to work on, on the editing bay, the editing bay that's handling everything, still has a number of efficiency issues. In other words, when you go to produce a video uh, on the editing bay, if things are all over the place and not necessarily done, then it takes extra effort to get it done, and then it takes longer to get it done. And that's what usually uh, slows things up. I have to have things sort of like an assembly line, where in other words, things have to be organized and so forth. So I know where the graphics are, I know where the audio is, I know where this is. You know, all the different components that go into making the video on the editing bay all have to be organized. And if parts are missing, then it takes extra time to go in and fill those missing parts. And that's what the thing. That's what's sort of going on in the new editing bay right now. Not all the parts are there. Not everything is properly organized. So that's what has to be done today is that all the organization on the editing desk has to be done. Once the editing desk is organized, then we can now uh, start you know, producing videos on a faster basis. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, these, are, these, are, these are things that are uh, works in progress. And so works in progress is very difficult as you're doing it. As you're doing the work, it's difficult to see the progress. Progress is always best viewed after you've done it. You look back, you see what you've done, and you either have done a good job, a half decent job, or you have no progress whatsoever. So, <laughs> and that is, that's probably, there's, there's some times when you don't, you know, if you're really, really off your mark and you really you sort of had a bad day, and, and that's where usually when a bad day comes in is that you've got no progress whatsoever, and, uh, uh, you end up looking behind and say, well, what did I get done? And you realize you've done nothing. Uh, you know, there is no progress. That's usually a bad day. But you can also have a bad day in perception alone where, yeah, you feel like you're not getting anything done, but you actually do get things done. It's just the, sort of the day you have to drag yourself through the day. That's typically when you're fatigued or uh, been doing a lot of work. And I do have those days where... where uh, I'm heavily fatigued, and I do have to push myself from point to point to point to point. Uh, but I am sl slowly learning how to, rather than having to push myself from point to point, uh, fix up the way I do things, the methodology of the way I do things, uh, in such a way that it's so easy to get them done. Otherwise, when you break up your projects into sub-projects, sub-projects that are so easy that there isn't a push to get them done. You just simply do them as you're in that particular area. And this is kind of what I'm working on doing now. I'm trying to spread this out more throughout uh, the uh, facility. Uh, it hasn't done, I haven't completed this. It's, it's a work in, this is another work in progress. And it, all these things are work in progress. You never actually go in and finish anything completely on its own. You always say, okay, I'm going to do this project here. You, it's a big project. Then you have to break it up into small projects. So that's kind of, that's kind of the way it is. In, in, in all project approach uh, uh, that you want to do are, are approach from the here's the big project, here's the bigger project you want to get done. Uh, what are the smaller project and or the sub project sub, sub project? And one of the things that you can do, and, and this is what I've found out, is there are some sub projects that can be common to a variety of other different projects. So it's not that all these projects are completely separate. There are sub projects that are interconnected. And if you can find these and find the products, the sub-products that are interconnected, 
then it actually helps getting the project done faster. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of how uh, I've worked on my efficiency. So even when I'm tired, even when my body is in the fatigue mode, uh, the work I can get done is more than I did before because I don't view the work as necessarily work. I don't view it as a drudgery. And you don't actually have to push yourself to get this thing done. It's sort of something that's already routine. It's already part of your, your, your normal day. So that uh, when you come to do something, you're not even th necessarily thinking that, ah, I have to do this. It's that you're just getting it done. And uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, how I progress at things. Uh, we'll, we'll say this is going to be a challenge to get into the uh, the network mode, to get into the, the full uh uh, TV channel network mode uh, and sort of get it done and this is what you'll see here so you'll see our progression to the uh, network model to, to the network um, sort of uh, stage and once that happens uh, and that should be done by September October then we'll be working on uh, moving on to live TV so basically October, September, October, that's when you should look, start listening for the announcements for live TV. Not there just yet, but the thing is that, that right now, that's our, this is our, pro, our projected, uh, this is the projected date. So, we will know more <laughs> after the summer, late, late August, we'll know more exactly where we are. I'll give it a sort of given assessment. We are either, either going to be on schedule, slightly behind schedule, or completely off schedule. <laughs> They're all possible, so... Uh, <laughs> Anyways, our time is now up. I will see you guys possibly tomorrow for the next uh, segment of the BTS vlog. And I'll also see you around on the rest of the channel. You know, see you around the channel. So, because <laughs> I'm going to be doing a lot more filming. So, you'll, you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Anyways, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye. <laughs>
But, you know, that's, this is sort of what the challenge is. The challenge is, just, you know, on a daily basis is to sort of look at yourself and look at your capacity and see what you can and can't do. Uh, at the end of the day, beyond your thoughts of what you can and can't do, there's the reality of what you did and didn't do. And you have to sit down and say, okay, how realistic were, were my expectations? When I sat down and I said, okay, this is what I want to, to do, what, this is what I want to get done, this is what I expect to get done in terms of the schedule, and what actually got done, if, there, if the two are significantly off, then you either have to adjust your efficiency model, or you have to adjust your expectations a little bit, so that your expectations are a little more realistic in terms of what you can achieve on a weekly basis. And I think this is this is sort of, you know, as I said before, there are no boundaries in the research that I'm doing. There's, there's it's open exploration and the puzzles are out everywhere. There aren't there is no edge to the puzzle. The edges are more or less your own defined limitations. And a large chunk of what you're doing here is looking at these limitations, understanding where your limitations are, and then trying to sort of move these limitations out. And again, and you're not and the thing is, you shouldn't expect to move them out. What you have to expect is that you need to sort of try to move them out. It doesn't need, and that means you're not always going to be successful. Not all attempts to move your limits out are going to be successful because, are going to be successful because in many cases, you may not understand what's holding that limitation, what, what's, holding that, that, <clears throat> what's holding that limitation in place. And it's not until you do understand what's holding that limitation in place can you then move the limit forward? And I've found from experience that moving limitations never occur in foresight. You can't predict when they're going to move. But they occur in hindsight. You look at your back, you look at the amount of work you got done that week, and you go, wow, I did more than I expected. And this is the same thing. As you look back in your journals, look back to see what you've done in terms of your vlogs, or your logs, or your journal, or however you keep your your daily going on, your daily thoughts, your daily achievements. Uh, however you mark it, uh, when you go back and look at it, ask yourself, have I progressed from where I was before? And I'm not going to real real progress, not what you were thinking, but in terms of what you actually were able to get done. Could you, you know, can you see this progress? If you can't see the progress, that means you could sit down and say, okay, well, and you, and you want to see progress. Then you have to sit down and seriously think about, again, the self-examination. Am I being realistic with way I, the way I see myself? And this is where the meditations come in. The meditations come in because meditations help you, and this is what they're designed to do, help you break down your own sense of ego, help you break down the rose-colored glasses you have about yourself, and helps you see the real you. What are you really? What do you, you know, beyond the facade you show everybody else, including sometimes to yourself, uh, what are you really? And this is what meditations are designed to do. The, the meditations are designed to help you uh, do the self-examination. And the self-examination can be used for a variety of different reasons. It could be used for just immediate temporal needs, like you know, getting a better paycheck, moving your understanding of, of certain things in work forward, uh, moving your relationship with parents forward or with other people forward. But it can also be, because you're now building these relationships with other people, uh, it could be something spiritual where you look at your spiritual relationships. What relationships do you have, relationships do you have spiritually? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you have a relationship with another God? You know, <laughs> Just because you say, oh, I've got a relationship with God. Well, okay. Well, how do you define this God? Who is he? Or she? Or whatever you want to call it. Uh, because the definition will actually determine whether your God is the same as my God and or or, 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 or some or is something else completely entirely different. You know? Uh, you could be off in the wrong direction. Uh, you know? You could be looking at a hallucination and saying, okay, well, this is what God is to me, and uh, off in that direction you could go, and when you get there, it's not what you expected it to be. Another, and this is the thing, if your expectations, and this is where meditations help your expectations, if your expectations are not realistic, in other words, 
your expectations, the way you see things, you cannot see reality. The chances are you're going to end up following a hallucination. And this, and this is even true spiritually. You could end up following images, false images, spiritually, uh, if you don't have a good sense of how you see expectation. Are you seeing expectation realistically, or are you seeing it through fantasy, through uh, these your own um, sense of self? Anyways, that's it for today. And you can see my eyes have been closed a lot again. Uh, so, I will see you more likely than not tomorrow for the next BTS, next segment of the BTS vlog. And then uh, we will continue our uploads uh, the next week with uh, hopefully a lot more. The, right now the editing bay is there. It's kind of stuck. There's still work that has to be done on the editing bay. So there's a lot of stuff on the editing bay that has to be done. I'm going to try to clear that up this weekend and start getting some more stuff out. But uh, we will see how that works. Anyways, see you later. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's time for another segment of the BTS vlog. It is, I mean, time and date stamp. It is four hours and 50 minutes into the day of Sunday, May 25th, 2014. Yeah, uh, it's been a rough weekend, or actually it's been actually a rough week since Wednesday. I've been feeling this fatigue where I get up and within a few hours I'm feeling completely exhausted and need to go back to bed again. So that's that happened yesterday, cut the day short. So that means I didn't get what I intended to get done yesterday. That means I have to do <laughs> do the intended work today. So we'll start the day again today with the assumption that I'm going to try, you know, to go full out. And the, the way I've got to sort of deal with these things, I've got to find a way to make the, the filming part of the routine. Just the way this is now part of the routine, I'm able to do this on a regular basis uh, because this is part of the, my routine. I have to find a way to make the other stuff part of the routine as well. So that there isn't really, there isn't going to be that needed effort to get the work done. You just like, come here, shoot the video, and that's it. You know, it's part of your, it's part of your routine. It's not an extra effort that you have to put forward in order to get the stuff done. Uh, but that's not what that's not what the other part of the, uh, the the TV studio isn't like that yet. It has it has to get there, but it's not as it's not uh, as simple as you think it is. You have to find a way to sort of work it into the schedule. Uh, and sometimes things work, sometimes things don't work. Mm, but otherwise, things are moving all right. Uh, it's just a matter of that uh, these things have to be done. The next thing is this guy has to come back. <sighs> Sorry, I'm working on the second half of uh, Big Bang Theory RL. BBTRL has two halves, as you know. It's got the BTS vlog. The BTS vlogs are going along fine. The second half, the Insta vlogs, have kind of fallen off. So I'm working on bringing that back again. Uh, and then once the BTS vlogs come back, uh, once the Insta vlogs come back, um, I also have this to today. Uh, let me just sort of put it this way. Uh, Beauty and the Geek has to be filmed today. A uh, Cyborgs and Cybernetics has to be filmed today. A news report has to be filmed today. And what else has to get done? Um, oh, that's right. Oh, this is sort of has to do with the Insta vlogs. Is that uh, people have been commenting on some of my videos, and the way I'm going to comment back is in, uh, is in the YouTuber manner. Is in the Insta vlogs a lot. Of, the Insta vlogs are going to be more in depth. Insta vlogs are going to be rather than uh, broken up bits of talking. Uh, the Insta vlogs are going to be more in depth. So here we talk about you know what's going on and how I'm feeling about things. 
in terms of uh, where my schedule is, uh, some of the new things I'm thinking about, and a lot of behind scenes going on. InstaVlogs, as I said before, are my research notes. So they're going to be, as you would expect, more in depth. So this is going to be a half hour on topic. Like one of the topics we're going to get into is we're going to get into this whole thing. And I had talked about this uh, earlier. Uh, it's about uh, this whole concept of feminism. And unfortunately, in the in the recent uh, sort of exposure of the sexual abuse on 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 on, uh, on YouTube, it's really left some of the girls who are victims of these uh, of these uh, uh, abusers in a position because instead of fully understanding what's going on and having to say, okay, what they did was wrong. They're left with this whole uh, feminist uh, ideology that removes the morality out of life to such a point that you can't say that what the person did was wrong. You can say you don't like it. You can say, you know, that, uh, and this is the way they put it, that they, they disrespected you, that they uh, took the, your, 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 they sort of, and they view it in terms of power. You know, they, they, they sort of degraded you to a point, you know, so because they wanted to feel more powerful. This is how they felt more powerful. But it's actually not more than that. And the thing is, when you hear the descriptions, you hear the um, anger and emotion in their voices. But the political correctness that they're sort of foisted upon, that's foisted upon them, uh, prevents them from actually articulating what they need to say. And it is, you know, I'm, not, I'm also, you know, it is difficult in front of a camera to say what you th want, what you want to say, to be articulate, because you do have to think uh, in the moment how you want to phrase things, and or if you want to rephrase them, it, that is definitely a problem because you can't go back and erase something. It's not the speaking is not like uh, writing. Writing is uh, in the moment. No, sorry, sorry, speaking is in the moment, but the writing, uh, you have your time to sort of sit back and think about things. And so this is what InstaVlogs is going to be, the more constructive thoughts. It's not going to be, it's going to be moving from the ad hoc to the more structured. Because uh, right now, in here, as I said, the BTS vlogs are my ad hoc notes. The InstaVlogs are going to be more of the, uh, the more, going, well, not more of the, it, it's the, journey from the ad hoc notes to more organized notation. So uh, that's how we describe it. And so it's going to have to require a little bit more articulation, a little bit more thought to it. Anyways, uh, our time is now up. I'm going to leave this a little bit short here, and I will talk to you in the next segment. All right, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.